Friends, in today's video, we are about to reveal a plan of Ibrahim Traore that has shocked the entire world. A mission so unexpected, so bold, that even experts were left speechless. Yes, today we will uncover why Ibrahim Traore released millions of heat-resistant bees into the heart of the Sahara Desert. We will break down this mission from the very beginning. Why was it started? What scientific logic supported it? What dangers were involved? And most importantly, why did this experiment stun the world? The Sahara Desert is not just an endless ocean of sand. It is a living monster that swallows thousands of acres of fertile African land every single year. Today, the desert stretches across 11 countries. And scientists warn that if its expansion is not stopped, massive parts of Africa may become completely barren within the next few decades. This threat shook Traore to his core. He knew that if the Sahara kept advancing, millions of people in West Africa would face disaster. No farming, no livestock, no water, and eventually no life. So he gathered scientists, agricultural experts, and environmental specialists, and asked a single question. What is the first step to stop the Sahara? After long discussions, one truth stood out. Life begins with plants, but plants begin with bees. Meaning, the first weapon against the desert was not water, not trees, but pollinators. This one idea changed the direction of the entire mission. Trare declared, if the chain of life begins with bees, then our fight must begin from there. But there was a huge problem. The Sahara is the hottest desert in the world. Normal honeybees die at 104 degrees Fahrenheit, while Saharan sand can reach 150 degrees Fahrenheit, enough to kill ordinary bees in moments. But Traore argued, the problem isn't bees, the problem is the type of bees. If normal honeybees cannot survive, then we must find the ones that can. This is where Traore began his most surprising research journey. He collected data from Africa and Arabia, regions known for extreme heat, scarce water, and harsh climates, yet still home to special types of honeybees. His research led him to two extraordinary heat-resistant species known as survival bees. 1. East African lowland honeybees. These bees have survived it for centuries in the dry, scorching regions of East Africa. They are smaller, lighter, faster, and their wings are stronger, allowing them to fly even in brutal heat. 2. Arabian slash Nubian honeybees. Found in Sudan, Eritrea, Somalia, and the southern Arabian Peninsula, these bees can maintain their hives even in desert-level temperatures. Both species shared one powerful trait. They can release heat from their bodies quickly, live in small groups, and remain active even at 110 degrees Fahrenheit, where normal bees would collapse. Trare immediately realized, if we want to fight the Sahara, these are the soldiers we need. He then instructed his experts. Trare ordered his experts to gather these special bees from different regions of Africa, study their genetics, observe their behavior, test their heat tolerance, and then prepare them for the desert experiment. The world watched in surprise. A national leader was personally overseeing the genomic research of bees. Then, during this research, his team discovered something that changed everything. Scientists told him that deep inside the Sahara, well, right at its heart, there was a place where honeybees had survived thousands of years ago. This place was the Kufra Oasis in Libya, where samples of ancient bees were found, dating back 5,000 to 10,000 years. What shocked everyone was this. These bees existed before the Sahara became a desert, back when the region was green, full of rivers, lakes, and wildlife. Then the climate changed, the rivers dried, the soil burned, and the entire region turned into desert. Yet the genetic traces showed that these bees tried to survive through those brutal transitions. And small pockets of bee life still existed near ancient oases. For Traore, this discovery was nothing less than a miracle. If ancient bees could survive thousands of years of climate change, then the modern heat-resistant bees he selected could perform far better. At this point, Traore's plan shifted from a scientific mission to something even greater the foundation of a potential economic revolution. He understood something powerful. Bees don't just pollinate flowers, they revive entire ecosystems. Around the world, honeybees safeguard crops worth billions of dollars.
In the United States alone, wild and farmed bees support over $15 billion worth of agriculture. Where bees return, life returns. Not just plants, but markets, trade, fruits, vegetables, orchards, and entire communities begin to thrive. Traore saw this clearly. He knew that if bees successfully settled around the Sahara's edge, the first thing to return would be wild plants, then grasslands, then grazing animals, then whole food chains, and finally human settlements. It would create a complete regreening chain reaction, a transformation starting from a tiny insect, but eventually reshaping the economy, environment, and population of the entire region. But when the heat-resistant African and Nubian bees were released along the borders of the Sahara, what happened next left scientists speechless. The moment these resilient bees entered the desert fringes, the process began exactly as Traoré had envisioned. The silent return of life. Seeds that had been sleeping under the sand for years began to wake. Within just a few weeks, small green shoots appeared. Fragile new plants breaking through the dry soil. More insects, birds, and animals began to gather around the area. It was the same chain reaction that always follows these bees wherever they go. Flowers, seeds, grass, grazing animals, birds, and eventually humans. At the same time, Traoré ordered his team to mark every location in the Sahara where underground moisture still existed so that microgreen zones could be created and the bees would receive a continuous food source. As these areas were identified, another shocking benefit appeared. The population of desert snakes began to increase. And wherever snakes exist, a terrifying but perfectly balanced creature created by nature always arrives. The honey badger. Honey badgers eat bee larvae, but they also hunt and eliminate deadly desert snakes. This meant that with the return of the bees, not only were plants returning, the natural defense system of the desert was restoring itself. Scientists were stunned. As the bees spread, the Sahara was no longer just an endless ocean of hot sand. It was slowly turning into a land where life was returning step by step. But Traoré knew one thing clearly. Bees alone cannot transform an entire desert. Water, soil, and climate balance were essential too. The world had once thought this mission was madness. But now, everywhere, people were asking the same question. Could Traoré become the first man in history to bring life back to the Sahara Desert? Some scientists also reminded the world that Sahara's sand carries millions of tons of nutrients every year to the oceans and even the Amazon rainforest. That's why Traoré didn't want to destroy the desert. He wanted to push it back carefully, restoring a natural balance that once existed. By the end of this journey, the world realized something profound. Releasing bees into the Sahara wasn't just an experiment. It was a regeneration plan that could save Africa from future crises of food, climate, and economy. And friends, if this project succeeds completely, the world may one day say, the Sahara wasn't changed by a global organization or a famous scientist. It was revived by a young captain, a man named Ibrahim Traoré. So friends, if Traoré's mission amazes you as much as it has shocked experts around the world, share your thoughts. Do you believe the Sahara can truly be revived through bees? Is this the project that will change Africa's future? Or is it an extraordinary risk? Your opinion matters. Tell us in the comments how you see Traoré's bold step. Was it madness? Or the greatest scientific miracle of the future? Subscribe the channel and press the bell icon. Thank you.